Shalom everyone. This is your um I would say wouldn't say speaker. Let's just say this is Sade. Um my name is Sade and today we're gonna do a lesson on chapter one of Isaiah and it is Isaiah complains of Judah for her revolt against Yah. So the first nine verses is speaking of Judah and its rebellion against the Most High. And let's start with verse one. It says the vision of Isaiah, who is the son of Amos, who is concerning Judah and Jerusalem, which he received in the reign of Uzziah, Jachdon, Ahaz, and Ezekiah, the kings of Judah. Okay. So verse, going on to verse 2, it says, Listen, you heaven, earth attend, for Yahuwah is speaking. I have weird children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. Now the Most High Yah is speaking of Israel as his children. And because they rebelled against him, he's going to punish them. Just like there's a lot of scriptures where he referred to his people as um, as his spouse. He's the, he's the husband, they're the spouse. The fact that he was married to Israel and Israel acting like a whore by going against the covenant and start worshiping other deities. So in this um, verse in chapter two, um, it says to again, listen, you listen, you heaven and earth attend for Yahuwah is speaking. I have reared children and brought them up. But they have rebelled against me. And then he goes on to say, And three, the oxen knoweth his owner, and the ass his master crib, but Israel do not know, my people do not even consider. So he's saying, Look, they rebel against me, they won't even consider it. So if they're not considering, they're not going to know. They don't understand because they won't consider it. So we have always been, Israel has always been a stiff-necked nation. And up until this very day, it's still acting the same. Verse 3 of verse 4. And a sinful nation... People weighed down with guilt, race of wrongdoers, perverted children. <laughs> they have abandoned Yahuwah, despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away from him. So he's saying, look, you are a sinful nation, a people full of iniquity, full of sin, A seed of evildoers. So in other words, even your forefather was evildoer, so you're the seed of, of your fathers, which was evildoers. You're corruptors. And you have just simply forsaken the Most High. Number five. It says, where shall I strike you next? If you persist in treason, the whole head is sick, the whole heart diseased. From the sole of the foot to the head, there is nothing healthy about you. Only wounds, bruises, and open sores. So he's saying the whole house of Israel is sick. 
or the whole house of Judah is sick. Or actually the whole house of Israel because he said that they, meaning Israel, or they have abandoned Yahweh, despised the Holy One of Israel. So specifically it's talking about Judah. I'm sorry, let me take that back, Judah. Because that's who he's dealing with right now, is Judah. Number six. From the sole of your foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ornament. All these punishment, these verses in, in literally sense refer to the people of Judah. The punishment for their sin is... And also, was, uh, when I was reading, and it gave me a, a precept of Isaiah 53, which is, is that in that verse, is a suffering, the suffering of Israel and Judah has been applied to suffering of Yahuwah. Uh, this is an analogy on uh, text, which is found in Isaiah 53. So let's go to Isaiah 53. I'm going to go to Isaiah 53. And it says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no calmness. No, actually, actually, that's two. That's three. Uh, Fifty-three, three. He is despised. This is Yahshua, and rejected of men. On Israel's despised and rejected of the world. There are people of sorrow, which it says that Yahshua is a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. Israel is constantly acquainted with grief, killing in the streets by cops. Killing in the streets by citizens, not being held accountable, killing amongst each other. <laughs> you know, just all kind of um all kind of issues that's going on with us. It says, um, and he and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. And is not Israel despised by all nations on the four corners of the earth, which we know that is a fact. Number seven, it says, your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolated as overthrown by strangers. Number eight, the daughter of Zion is left like a, shady, a shanty in a vineyard, like a shed in a cucumber field, like a city besieged. So even itself, It's almost like it's saying whenever they look at us as a people, as a nation, is a shaking of the head against the daughters of Zion. So this particular chapter also is, is a chapter about Yahuwah bringing the Assyrian against Israel as a rod of iron, a hand of his punishment against them because they're disobedient. Just like today, Yah is sending his hand, his rod against uh, us and all all type of forms but yet we won't even consider it like it says early in, in this in the scripture we want to consider it, we won't think of it we just keep on going about our days continue sinning not giving any any regards to um, the most high um, laws and commandments and statutes and the fact that we're supposed to be keeping them we had to turn back to the, the Torah turn back to the teaching y'all because that's the only way we're gonna get out of this situation we have to turn back to the um, to the Most High Yah, because he's not, he's not going to stop punishing us until we do. And we know there's a remnant. We know not all Israel going to accept it. You know that scripture said it was a two thirds will be <coughs> cast out or cast away because they reject him. <clears throat> Number nine, it says, except the Lord of Hosts had left us unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. He said, look, if the Lord had not set aside a remnant, that we would be, we would be destroyed just like Sodom and Gomorrah. So in other words, you know the reason he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah is because there was no righteousness, anyone righteous that he could find. But because he knew in his people there was going to be a righteous remnant, that's why he preserved the righteous, the, the remnant. 
In fact, let's go to Isaiah 9, 24. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 24. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, Romans. Oh, I'm talking about Isaiah. Romans 9. And verse 24. I'm going to read through 29. It says, I mean, Romans 9, verse, starting at verse 24. And this is a precept to Isaiah 1 9. It says, Even up, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now we know the Gentiles are talking about the northern kingdom it's not talking about gentile nations and you can also find that in john seven thirty five, when it says then said the jews among themselves whither will he go speaking of yeshua that we shall not find him will we go into the dispersed among the gentiles and teach, teach the gentiles so this verse 25 and 24 is not talking about the other nations it's talking about those israelites that are living in other nations as gentiles and living in Gentile nations as Gentiles. Number 5 of Romans 9. As he said also in Hosea, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass, 26, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Verse 27. And Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the name of Israel the children of Israel, as be the sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be saved. Again, that's also a precept to Isaiah 1 9. Talking about when it says, it Had Yahuwah um, not left us a few survivors, we should be like Sodom, we should be like Gomorrah, or survivors or remnant. Um, verse 28 For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except Yahuwah Sabbath had not left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. So again, that is Romans 9, 24 through 29, and that's a precept to Isaiah 1, verse 9. So now let's go to uh, verse 10. And verse 10 through 20 is talking about the hypocrisy. Of Judah. So let's go ahead and read. It says, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 10 Hear what Yahuwah says, you ruler of Sodom, listen to what our God teaches you, you people of Gomorrah. So this is the, again, again, the, the, um, um, the hypocrisy of Judah against the Most High. And you just, is, is, I just, we should, should praise God. He did not break his promise that he would not utterly destroy us because he had, we would be like Sodom and Gomorrah if he had destroyed us. So we should be grateful that he saved a remnant out of a remnant, as some people say. So 10. I'm 11. It says, what are, your, what are your endless sacrifices to me? So this is what he called him, a hypocrite. He said, what are your endless sacrifices to me? Yah, Yah says, Yahuwah, I am sick of burnt offering, of rams and the fat of calves. I take no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lamb and goats. When you come and present yourselves before me, who have asked you to trample through my course? So he's saying, look, <laughs> he said, you bring this sacrifice to me. Who asked you to do this? You go through all this, you bring a sick burnt offering of rams and the fat of calves. He said, you take no pleasure in blood or bulls and lambs and goat. And he goes on to say in 13, bring no more feudal cereal offering. 
The smoke from them fills me with disgust. New moons, Sabbaths, assemblies, I cannot endure solemnity. Solemnity. Combined with guilt. Or bring no more vain oblation. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. It is iniquity, even a solemn meeting. He looked. So y'all were saying, get away with me from me with your sin and your hypocrites combined with guilt. <laughs> but remember, he called them wicked people. Remember, he said uh, that the whole head is sick, the whole heart is diseased. From the sole of our, or our foot to the head, there was nothing healthy about us. That we were wicked, evildoers, perverted children. He said, look, you're, you're, you're hypocrites. And you're bringing all these sacrifices and burnt offering. And he's like, who asked you to do this when you know that you're full of sin? I didn't ask you to do it. I didn't ask you to bring them to me. He said, bring no more. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. <laughs> 14 says, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. 15. It says, you have multiplied your, your prayers. I should not be listening. Your hand are covered in blood. 15. So Israel, uh, Judah was just perpetually being sinful and ignoring the laws of the Most High. And when, they, when, they, and when he said, when Israel called upon him, he would hide his face because blood is upon their hands, not only of the sacrificial victim, but of innocent people as well. So not only the sacrifice, sacrifice that they bring him to him, but also the innocence of people. So they were killing people too, going around killing innocent people. And then going to have the nerves to bring up a... a Sacrifice to the most high. Boy, they was, you know what? That's merciful. We know that's merciful. I don't know what I would have done <laughs> being, you know, knowing that they were, you know, as if he couldn't see them committing all those, uh, couldn't committing all the sins um, against him and against others. As if they were trying to hide what they were doing from him. I don't understand that part. But anyways, I guess we do it today as well. And we just don't think about it. And we start reading about, about it about someone else and it's almost like okay reality check am i doing the same thing 16. it says take your wrongdoing out of my sight 17 cease doing evil learn to do good search for justice discipline the violent be just to the orphan plead for the widow so this is what you should be doing. 18. Then he goes to say, come let us talk this over. Even after all of this, the Most High is still bidding his people to come to him. You know, when there's a scripture that says that he has an everlasting love for Israel, he does. And he know the covenant that he made with the, with the, our forefathers. So he know he can't, he can't break that covenant. He has to keep his covenant. And meaning his promise. And yet he still loves us. Let's go over 18 again. Come let us talk this over. Says Yahuwah. Though your sins are like scarlet. They should be white as snow. They should be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson. There should be like wool. These two verses, 19 and 20, takes me back to Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15. The blessings 
and then 16 through 18, the curses. But if you refuse and rebel, the word should eat you instead, for Yahuwah's mouth has spoken. Twenty-one. It says the faithful city. What a harlot she has become. Zion once full of fair judgment, where saving justice used to dwell, but now assassins. So they're killing, assassinating their own leaders, killing their own people, their brethren, fighting amongst each other. The house of Judah against the house of Israel or Ephraim. Blood, battling blood. Mm. 21. Number 22. Your silver, silver has turned into droughts. Your wine is watered. 28, 23. Your princes are rebels. <laughs> Accomplices of bragging, bra um, bragging, bragging. So the princes are rebellious and company of thieves. Everyone loves gifts and follow after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither do the new, neither do it the cause of the widow come unto them. So their duty was to judge. The fatherless and plead for the widows, but they're doing it quite the opposite. Verse 24. Actually, verse 23. No, it's 24. Hence the Lord Yahuwah Sabbat, the mighty one of Israel, says this Disaster, I shall get the better of my enemies, I shall revenge myself on my foes. 25 and I will turn my hand against you I shall purge your droughts as though with pottage I shall remove all your alloy now he's getting ready he's he's getting ready to show them grace and this is what he said he'll have to take from them 27 to make them righteous before him again 27 Zion will be Zion will be redeemed by fair judgment and those who return by saving justice rebels and sinners alike would be destroyed and those who abandon Yahweh would perish verse 29 through 31 how ashamed you would be of the tabernacle or he's speaking of a tree or oak which give you such a delight and how you would blush for the gardens which you choose for you would be like a turbanic turbanic with faded leaves like a garden without waters the strong would become like tender his work like the spark both will go up in flames together with no one to put them out so 29 is actually this is against the sacred trees. So he kind of it sounds like he's he's comparing Judah in his condition as to a, 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 uh, this against a sacred tree. He says, "How shamed, ashamed you would be of the tabernacle, which give you such delight, and how you would blush." Blush from the garden which you chose, for you would be like a terminic with faded leaves, like a garden without water. The strong would become like tender, his work like spark, but will go out, go up in flames together with no one to put them out. So he's comparing Judah's condition to um, against a tree, a sacred tree. Judah was once sacred, now because of their disobedient, they have become. 
an enemy to the most side and have rebelled against them and pretty much um, made treason treason against them so they're going against the most high so this is the um, message that Isaiah the son of Amos um, brought to um, Judah and then also he said in where he said he's going to bring the Assyrians against them so every time Judah would go or Israel would go against the most high and start breaking the covenant and living like the heathens, the other nations, and stepped out of their holiness, he would always bring another nation, whether it was Babylon, the Assyrians, the Greeks, even when he brought Egypt against them. Up until this day, nations still come against us. We're still being punished in the streets in our homes, no matter where we go, it's still happening to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's not going to end until we turn back to him, turn back to the covenant, start walking in the covenant. Um, he called us to be a holy people. And we know not all Israel is going to be saved because there's only a remnant going to be saved. So we just pray that we be part of that remnant. Um, but the Most High is not going to stop Discipline his children until they turn back to him. Just like a mother and a father discipline their children. Um, and the discipline is to bring them back to the fold. Um, so anyways, um, that is the end of chapter 1. So my next chapter will be chapter 2, Isaiah chapter 2. And hopefully um, this was encouraging the words, not my words, but Isaiah 1. Um, showing us that we need to, if we want his blessings, that we need to come back to him. We need to turn back to the covenant and start walking in the covenant and keeping those laws and commandments. So in saying that, I say shalom.